فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم The second thing that he done it is because the very common famous hadith of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام which the author himself brought it in his 40 hadith which is الدين النصيحة that the religion is based upon sincere advice and from the things that is based advice on is لِكِتَابِهِ to the book of Allah نعم This advice includes clarifying the necessary manners and etiquettes of those who memorize the Qur'an and those of its students So that's, that's the advice to the Qur'an Somebody asks you what is the advice to the Qur'an from, there's many, but from it is the etiquettes of the one who's carrying the Qur'an and seeking the Qur'an guiding that person towards the, the way of how they need to you see a young boy who's memorized the Qur'an half of the Kitab and he's when you look at him go to the toilet he urinates, doesn't even wash the tahara, he doesn't wash the urine from himself, he doesn't even know the tahara properly, and etc. Sah? And etc. Are you with me, brothers? So, what is it that we need to understand? That memorizing the Quran, it comes with etiquette of how you need to carry the Quran. Are you with me, brothers? Yeah. As well as guiding them to actualize these manners and directing their attention to them. In writing this book, I have adopted the means of brevity and summarization and avoided elaboration ex and excessive pro prolongation. Now what we need to realize is the author is saying, I'm abstaining from lengthening my book, going into too much details and writing a lot. And remember at the beginning, what did I say? The book is what? It's too long. That's how our aspiration has become. A book like this for him is a summary, is a khulasa. It's an actual summary, a summarized uh, work. It's actually what? It's summarized. And the author did his best to make sure that the person who's reading it is given straight points, bullet points that he can take with him. Now. I've limited myself to mentioning only one etiquette per chapter and to providing examples that illustrate the different dimensions of the quality in discussion. So the author here, Rahimullah, he places a chapter and in that chapter he mentions one etiquette for it. And then that etiquette, he speaks about it from many different dimensions and he tackles, he brings evidences for it, he brings hadith for it. Now, For the purpose of being concise, I have mentioned these examples in this case, different narrations without their chains of narrations in spite of the fact that I have these chains by the grace of Allah co committed to memory. The author, Rahimahullah, he mentions that he's going to summarize this book so much so that he's going to get rid of the athanid, the chain of narration, the chain, he won't mention the chain. So we bring the hadith without the senate. But he's saying here, even though that I remove the chain of narration, but don't think to yourself that I don't have it. He says, Bihamdillahi indi min al This is something solid with me. I have it. Okay? I have it, I have it prepared. I'm not leaving it because I'm unable to give it. I'm leaving it because I'm trying to make it simple for you. I don't want to confuse you with hadatana and akhbarana and ba'ana. I'm just getting to the hadith directly. Now. For my aim is to draw attention to the fundamental message and to occasionally allude to the is that which I thought best to leave out. Back in the days it was like that. The person would have to bring the chain of narration. The qa'id according to muhaddithin is what? Man asnada faqad ahalak. That the person who gives you the chain of narration, he's done his part. Whether the hadith is weak or authentic or sound, whatever. If I've given you the chain of narration, I've done my part. It's upon you to go and verify whether it's authentic. So he's saying, I personally, I've got rid of that chain. And the only reason why I did it is so I can summarize it, so I can make it short and easy. Right, yeah? And so that it can be memorized now. The reason I have opted for a brief treatment of this subject is, is why? Is so that it may be more easily memorized. So he wants his book to be memorized. Right? Who's, who's ready to say that I would memorize the book? The reason why is that I got rid of the Sanid and the uh, chains and I've actually summarized my book is so somebody can memorize it. Are you with me, brothers? So who can put his hand up and say, I'm going to memorize it? But you can only remember, yeah? Shah Abdul Rizal, good, mashallah. But the person who memorizes it has to already have memorized what? The Quran. Sahih? He has to have taken on himself to memorize the, the Quran. No, because this is a book that's studied after the Quran, sah? 
benefited from and disseminated. Another thing he says, The reason is, pay attention. Some people they think to you, they say they say to you, <coughs> memorization can go against understanding, and that's incorrect. Actually, memorizing makes things understandable for you. By hifz is one of the means to understand something, right? Something you true you can't understand, just memorize it sometimes. I can assure you the understanding will be very sharp. It will sharpen your understanding. Are you with me, brothers? And I've, this is one thing I've personally seen that the people who've memorized the Quran, it bec speaking Arabic, Arabic becomes very easy for them. True or false? Some of them never traveled and never went to other world, countries in the world. They've only studied what? They've only studied the Quran and they memorized the Quran. When they left and they finished the Quran, they didn't even leave the country, the UK. They're still in the UK. The Arabic is very good, mashallah, amazing. Also, for the purpose of further benefiting readers and students, I have added a chapter at the end of the book dedicated to clarifying any obscure names and words that appear throughout the text in a manner that is clear. The author here, Rahimahullah, he at the ending of the book, right at the end of the book, there's a whole chapter where he talks about the asma which are gharib, asma which are not known, who's, you know, asma and lugat, terms that are very hard that he used, that need clarification. But this tabah that we have, Darul Min Hajj, what they did was, they took, Darul Min Hajj, what they did is they took that back, the ending chapter, they still let it be there, but what they did is they took it and they put it on the footnote. Does it make sense? So right under the wording, they put number one, you look at the bottom and you find it, so it's already there. So we, as we're going through it, we're going to use that. So we're not going to go at the ending of the book and then go through all the terms that were gharib like that. We're not going to do that. What are we going to do? We are just going to take it as we go along because it's right at the bottom for us. And in accordance with their appearance in the different chapters, this chapter exists in the original Arabic text as for this translation. All such obscurities are translated as we move through the book and will not be explained again in a separate chapter. I have also included several fundamental guiding principles and important benefits throughout the chapters themselves and have clarified and distinguished between authentic and weak hadith. So the author has said that I've clarified a hadith which are sahih from the weak ones and then some we're going to talk about. Because remember, tasahih al tabaif is based upon what? al ijtihad is based upon Per, you know, personal uh, reasoning. So the person can see something to be authentic and others may see it not to be authentic. But since the time is very little, we won't, we won't have time to go through the tasbih and tadqif of hadith. So we'll just take it from him as he says it. Now, Attributing them to the narrators from among the reliable imams and have neglected to do this only in rare instances. Then the author Rahimahullah says, وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْعُلَمَاءِ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْحَدِيثِ وَغَيْرِهِمْ جَوَّزُوا الْعَمَلَ بِالتَّضْعِيفِ فِي فَضَائِلِ الْأَعْمَالِ وَمَعَ هَذَا فَإِنِّي أَقْتَصِرُ عَلَى الصَّحِيحِ وَلَا أَذْكُرُ الضَّعِيفَ إِلَّا فِي بَعْضِ الْأَحْوَالِ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَرِيبِ تَوَكُّلِي وَاعْتِمَادِي وَإِلَيْهِ تَفْوِيضِي وَاسْتِنَادِي أَسْأَلُهُ سُلُوكَ سَبِيلَ الرَّشَادِ وَالْعِصْمَةَ مِنْ أَحْوَالِ الزَّيْغِ وَالْعِنَادِ وَالدَّوَامَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ وَغَيْرِهِ مِنْ الْخَيْرِ فِي الزِّيَادِ وأبتيل إليه سبحانه أن يوفقني لمرضاته ويجعلني ممن يخشاه ويتقيه حق التقى حق تقاته وأن يجعلني ممن يخشاه ويتقيه حق تقواه وأن يهديني لحسن النيات ويسر لي جميع أنواع الخيرات ويعينني على أنواع المكرمات ويديمني على ذلك حتى الممات وأن يفعل ذلك كله بجميع أحبابي وسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وحسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وهذه فهرسة أبواب الباب الأول في أطراف من فضيلته في من فضيلة تلاوة القرآن وحملته الباب الثاني في ترجيح القراءة والقارئ على غيرهما الباب الثالث في إكرام أهل القرآن والنهي عن إيذائهم الباب الرابع في آداب معلم القرآن ومتعلمه الباب الخامس في آداب حامل القرآن الباب السادس 
في آداب القراءة وهو معظم الكتاب ومقصوده الباب السابع في آداب الناس كلهم مع القرآن الباب الثامن في الآيات والسور المستحبة في أوقات وأحوال مخصوصة الباب التاسع في كتابة القرآن وإكرام المصحف الباب العاشر في طبط ألفاظ الكتاب الباب الأول في أطراف من فضيلة تلاوة القرآن وحملته قال الله عز وجل إن الذين يتلون كتاب الله وقاموا الصلاة وأنفقوا مما رزقناهم سرا وعلانية سرا وعلانية يرجون تجارة لن تبور ليوفيهم أجورهم ويزيدهم من فضله إنه غفور شكور وروينا عن عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه رواه الإمام وبعبد الله محمد بن إسماعيل بن إبراهيم البخاري في كتب صحيحه الذي هو صح الكتب بعد القرآن وعن عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي يقرأ القرآن وهو ماهر به مع السفرة الكرام البررة والذي يقرأ القرآن ويتتعتع فيه وهو عليه شاق له أجران رواه البخاري وابو الحسين مسلم بن الحجاج بن مسلم النيسابوري في صحيحيهما وعن أبي موسى الأشعري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مثل المؤمن الذي يقرأ القرآن مثل 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 أترجة مثل المؤمن الذي يقرأ القرآن مثل الأترجة ريحها طيب وطعمها طيب ومثل المؤمن الذي لا يقرأ القرآن مثل التمرة لا ريح لها ولا طع ولا طعمها حلول تزيد وطعمها ولا ريح لها وطعمها حلول نا ومثل المنافق الذي يقرأ القرآن مثل الريحانة ريحها طيب وطعمها مر ومثل المنافق الذي لا يقرأ القرآن كمثل الحنظلة ليس لها ريح وطعمها مر رواه البخاري ومسلم وعن عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه عن النبي عن أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الله تعالى يرفع بهذا الكتاب أقواما ويضع به آخرين رواه مسلم وعن أبي أمامة الباهلي رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول اقرأوا القرآن فإنه يأتي يوم القيامة شفيعا لأصحابه رواه مسلم وعن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا حسد إلا فتنتين رجل رجل both ways are correct رجل آتاه الله القرآن فهو, يق فهو يقوم به آناء الليل وآناء النهار ورجل آتاه الله مالا فهو ينفقه آناء الليل وآناء النهار رواه البخاري ومسلم وروينا أيضا من رواية عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه لا حسد إلا فتنتين رجل آتاه رجل both ways are correct رجل آتاه الله مالا فسلطه على هلكته في الحق ورجل ورجل آتاه الله حكمة فهو يقضي بها ويعلمها وعن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من قرأ حرفا من كتاب الله فلو حسنة والحسنة بعشر أمتار لا أقول ألف لام ميم لا أقول ألف لام ميم حرف بل ألف حرف ولام حرف وميم حرف رواه أبو عيسى محمد بن عيسى الترمذي ترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح وعن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يقول الرب سبحانه وتعالى من شغله القرآن وذكري عن مسألتي أعطيت أفضل ما أعطي السائلين وأفضل كلام الله سبحانه وتعالى على سائر الكلام كفضل الله تعالى على خلقه رواه الترمذي وقال حديث حسن وعن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم
إلا الذي ليس في جوفي شيء من القرآن كالبيت الخرب رواه الترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح وعن عبد الله بن عمرو بن العاص رضي الله تعالى عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يقال لصاحب القرآن اقرأ وارتقي ورتل كما كنت ترتل في الدنيا فإن منزلتك عند آخر آية تقرأها رواه أبو داود والترمذي والنسائي وقال الترمذي حديث حسن صحيح وعن معاذ بن أنس رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من قرأ القرآن وعمل, بم وعمل بما فيه ألبس والدا ألبس والداه تاجا يوم القيامة ضوءه أحسن من ضوء الشمس في بيوت الدنيا فما ظنكم بالذي عمل بهذا رواه أبو داود وروى الدارمي بإسناده عن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه قال اقرأوا القرآن فإن الله تعالى لا يعذب قلبا وعاء القرآن وإن هذا القرآن مأدبة وإن هذا القرآن مأدبة مأدبة both ways are correct وإن هذا القرآن مأدبة وإن هذا القرآن مأدبة الله تعالى فمن دخل فيه فهو آمن ومن أحب القرآن فليبشر وعن عبد الحميد الحم That's it right right فليبشر وعن عبد الحميد الحماني قال سألت سفيان الثوري عن الرجل يغزو أحب إليك أو يقرأ القرآن فقال يقرأ القرآن لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه And while it is important to note that scholars of hadith as well as other scholars have ruled that weak, weak narrations which pertain to the virtues of the acts of worship may be considered or deemed acceptable. This, this according to the statement of the author which is that the scholars of hadith permitted al-amalu al-amalu bil-da'ifi fi fadail al-a'mal is bishuruti ha with these conditions though. Naam, a hadith which are weak can be implemented in fadail al-a'mal. And scholars have stipulated conditions from the conditions that they stipulated which is that it's permissible to do it in targhib wa targhib which is all fadail al-a'mal yes but it can't be mashtadda da'fu its weakness can't be severe no so it can't reach mawdu' it can't be fabricated and it can't be in matters which are ahkam halal and haram bay nikah talaq and etc no not at all you can't use it um, also you're not allowed to attribute it to the Prophet alayhi salatu you can't say Rasulullah said this because you'll fall under the hadith man kadaba alayya muta'amidan falyatabawwa maq'adahu min al-nar you'll be lying about the messenger alayhi salatu wassalam now I have nonetheless restricted myself primarily to authentic narrations and to have mentioned weak narrations on rare occasions only so the author says even though i'm i believe the permissibility and he's saying that it's allowed for me to go and to use weak narrations for in fadail al-a'mal i won't do that alhamdulillah i've restricted myself to authentic hadith and i'm not going to mention the weak ones but i could if i wanted to and he said if i do happen to use weak narrations i will mention them Aye? often imam an nawawi will state the degree of authenticity after mentioning the hadith and so it is so it might be helpful to quickly and briefly mention the meanings of the Arabic words used to describe the degree of authenticity. Sahih. No, don't, don't mention that. That's the editor of the English. Yeah, let's go to the book. And yeah. upon Allah, the most gracious is my reliance and my dependence. And to him is my submission. And in him I put my complete trust. When he did that in the English translation, did he say that that's his own wordings? Or did he just emerge into his own the speech of Imam Nawi in the translation? Show me. Often Imam Nawi, and he added it to the, the actual book in the translation. If he wanted to say that, he should put it on a footnote. 
Yeah, yeah start with what you say. Well, Allah, so on Allah and I rely. And upon Allah, the most gracious is my reliance and my dependence. And to Him is my submission. And in Him I put my complete trust. I ask Him to guide me to the path of guidance. Grant me success throughout it and to protect me against adopting the ways of misguided and the stubborn. And I ask that He continue to bless me with these and other blessings. And I implore Him to guide me to that which pleases Him and to make me of those who keep their duty to Him and fear Him as He should be feared. I also pray that He guide, he guide me to forming righteous intentions and that he make easy for me the path to all that is noble and virtuous and that he grant me steadfastness upon all that upon all this until i die i father i further ask him that he grant my loved ones and the rest of the muslims everything that i have asked for myself allah suffices us and he is the best disposer disposer of our affairs and there is neither might nor power except with Allah, the exalted, the most gracious. Allah the Almighty says, Verily those who recite the book of Allah and establish praise and spend out of that which we have provided them secretly and openly, hoping for, hoping for trade gain that will never perish, that Allah the Almighty may complete their reward for them and increase them of His bounty, Verily, he is oft forgiven, thankful. Here, the ayah that the author brought, those who read the Quran and then establish the prayer and then give from their wealth, what's the reward that they get? They are in yarjuna tijarat al tabur. They are in a trading uh, that, they, that will not fail, inshallah. Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, narrates that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, The best among you Muslims are those who learn the Quran and teach it. The word khayrukum is Siratul Mubalagha and it comes from the word akhyar, suqitatil alif li kathratil tikrar, that the alif is dropped because of the excessive usage. So khayrukum is the, khayrukum, sorry, it means akhyarukum, the best amongst you. It's a superlative in English. The best amongst you from all of the people is the one who learns the Quran. And then he goes and he teaches that Quran. That person is the best. Uthman radiallahu anhu is the one who narrated this hadith. Narrated by Al Bukhari, the most authentic book after the noble Quran. Al Imam Al Bukhari's kitab is Al Sahu Kitabin. Al Sahu Kitabin Ba'd Kitabillah, the most authentic book. Iraq says, Wa awwalu man alaf. وأول من صنف في الصحيح محمد وخط وخص بالترجيح ومسلم بعد وبعد الغرب مع أبي علي فضلوا ذا لو نفع ولم يعماه ولكن قلما عند ابن الأخرم منه قد فاتهما ورد لكن قال يحيى البر لم يفوت الخمسة إلا النزر وفيه ما فيه لقول الجعف يحفظ من عشر ألف ألف so the first person who authored the most authentic book after the book of Allah is the Imam al-Bukhari نعم Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. Aisha is the wife of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And she was the only virgin which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam married ever. She was the daughter of who? She was the daughter of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So, so she was the wife of the Prophet. She said, hey. Narrated that the message of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, he who recites the Quran proficiently is among the noble, righteous, recording angels. So the person who reads the Quran proficiently, he's mahir, he doesn't, doesn't do, he finds ease with reciting the Quran, then this person is with what? Ma'athafarati, al-kirami, al-bararati, who us the word safarah is the recording angels. Al-Bararati is Jam'u Barin, is the one who's obedient. Okay? It's the mu al the one who obeys his Lord. Now, Kiram is a person who is what? Noble and great. So the one who reads the Quran and he find he reads he reads it professionally. This is the this is the virtue of the Quran reading the Quran. Are you? And he who recites it with difficulty. So this one yatata. Mama'ana yatata. It means يشتد ويشق عليه. It's hard on him. 
he's, but he's trying. He's putting in the effort, but it's hard for him. This one here will have his reward doubled. His reward is two. He gets two reward, but he doesn't get to the level of what? He doesn't get to the level of the one who's reading it professionally. Because the one who's reading it fluently and he's not, he's just rolling off his tongue. He's Ma'a Safarat al Kiram al Barari. Narrated by Al Bukhari and Muslim. Abu, Mu Abu Musa al Ash'ari, may Allah be pleased with him, said, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, The example of the believer who recites the Quran is that of Citron. It has a pleasant scent and taste. The example of the one who reads the Quran, Mithl Utruja. Utruja is like a. Utruja is a. Uh, what's, the, what's it called when oranges and, and all these. Yeah? A citrus, right? Yeah, it's a citrus. So the citrus, what's the, what's the smell of the citrus? Rihuha tayyib. Its fragrance and its smell is amazing. Wa ta'muha and its taste is also what? Good. Like orange. Like, it's nice, right? They're very good. So the smell, I heard perfumes is made from it. Sah? Are you with me? Ulidhalik ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah mentions that the utruja is actually was used, if, if it's used in a house, jinns don't enter it. Jinns don't enter the house. Or if the person rubs it on themselves. And then maqalahu shaykh al-Islam. Can you turn around and look at it when you turn your back on the people? Yeah. Because there's no recorder for him, remember? Yeah, so this will pick it up. Yeah. And get close, as close as you can to it. Don't worry. They won't find it disrespectful that you turn their back on them. Don't worry. And the example of a believer who doesn't recite Quran is that of a date. It has no scent, but its taste is pleasant. So the, the mu'min doesn't read the Quran, he's like a date. The date you can eat, but does it have any smell? No. So you don't smell nice. You're a believer, but you have Iman, so you, your, your taste is nice. Because you're a believer. But do you have any smell with you? Because you're not reading the Quran, there's no smell for you. So this is where the issue of reading the Quran here, reading the Quran, ma'hir bihi ma'as safarat al-kiram al-barara is the person who studies it with tajweed, mutqin, when he reads it. And that's why a book like this evening's kitab, which will be taught here, inshallah, which is Muqaddimah al jazariya it's a book that will give you that ability. Don't you guys want to be from the Safarat al-Kiram al-Barara? That level? So you need to strengthen your tongue in how to read the Quran. Now. And the example of a hypocrite who recites the Quran is like sweet basil. Its scent is pleasant, but its taste is bitter. So the munafiq who reads the Quran, even he has a good smell. But when you eat it, like the basil, when you eat it, what's this? That's how the munafiq is. Are you? And the hypocrite who does not recite the Quran is like colosins. Which is bit, very, very bitter when you eat it and has no smell to it. It has no scent and taste bitter. Narrated by Al Bukhari. Umar ibn al Khattab radiallahu anhu said, The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah the Almighty honors some with, his, with this Quran and disgraces others. Narrated by Muslim. This Umar said this at a time when there was a man, Umar made a man in charge of Madi Mecca and he gave him the leadership of Mecca. There was a man in which Umar radiallahu anhu, he made this man the leader of Mecca. And so Umar, as his job was, he would always go to the places where he makes anyone a governor to check if he's doing his job properly. So Umar radiallahu anhu came. And as he was coming, the man, he left Mecca. Okay, he moved away from Mecca. So he met Umar radiallahu anhu on the outskirts of Mecca. So Umar said to him, who did you leave the people with? If you're here, who's looking after the affairs of the people? Does that make sense? It's not like you just drove outside Mecca, Mecca to just pick me up and you got a car or something. It takes hours to go back again. Maybe a day or so. So in the meantime, who's running Mecca? Can't just leave it in chaos. He said, I left it with Abi Baz... Uh, uh, what was it he said? Abi Abza. I left it with Abi Abza. Umar said, I've never heard this person before. Who is he? He said, it was a slave that I freed. 
and was old slave, okay, and he, Amr was a bit pushed, he was a bit shocked. And he said, a slave running the affairs of free people, in other words, slaves weren't educated back then, they won't be taught, they wouldn't learn, they wouldn't study. So how, and this is, remember, this is the hub, this is Mecca, this is Mecca. For them to allow a slave to run them, he has to have something. So what is it that he has? And then he said to Umar, Hafidha kitab Allah, the man memorized the Quran. And he knows the fara'il, inheritance. And the reason why he said inheritance means he knows the tafsir of the Quran. Because the hardest part of the tafsir of the Quran is what? Is the inheritance. It's meaning he knows the Quran is meaning and he's memorized it. Umar then said, Inna Allah ta'ala yarfa'u bihada al-Quran aqwaman. Through this Qur'an, Allah raises a people. And he humiliates another group of people. Look at this man. There was nothing in the community. had no value. But look what put him up. What took him up? Brothers, Billah alaykum. Ramadan, you see little brothers come up, lead the people, the, the taraweeh, and everybody else is behind them. What raised this person? Why is he in charge? Why is he running everything? Huh? Why is he in the front? And everybody else is in the back? Allah raised him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah yarfa'u bihada al-Qur'an aqwaman. Through this Qur'an, Allah raises a people and he humiliates another group of people. Are you with me, brothers? So that's what, it ha that's what happens. You see an old person, wealthy person, rich person, everything, they're in the back, standing. They have no, they have no status. They have nothing. This young kid is leading. Why is he leading? Because he's raised. He's raised. Now, Abu Umar al-Bahi radiyallahu anhu said, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Recite the Qur'an, for on the day of resurrection, it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it. Narrated by Muslim. Umar radiyallahu anhu also, So read the Qur'an. For very the Qur'an will be an intercession for you the day of judgment. The Qur'an will come and say, Ya Allah, don't punish this person, forgive him. He used to read me a lot. I was always on his tongue. Ya Allah, la tu'adhibu. Oh Allah, don't punish him. He was always reading me. Today I can't let him get humiliated. The Quran will intercede on your behalf. Why? Because he used to read it. So it intercedes for you the day of judgment. Now. Umar radiallahu anhu also narrates that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sorry. The thing that's very powerful is that's a true friend. Alisa Kadari isn't that a true friend? The one that can come at the times of hardship and say, Ya Allah, please help. Who can help you at a time when everybody else has deserted you. Even your own parents have deserted you. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مْرِئِ مِنْهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ شَأْنُ يُغْنِيهِ Everyone's left you. Your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your relatives, your friends, your homies, your boys. They walked out on you. Who's with you today? The Quran. The Quran comes and says, Ya Allah, don't, don't punish this person. So this is why these are the things that you befriend now. You show loyalty to the Quran. It's always with you. You're reading it. You're going over it. You're covering it. You're finishing it. So it can intercede on your behalf. That's why the Prophet said, Iqra'u al-Quran. Read the Quran a lot. Because it will come the day of judgment and it will intercede on you. The day when you most need help. Oh Allah, make us those who are helped by the Qur'an. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Envy is prohibited except in two. So here the word that the Prophet used is hasid. Except the envy of two kinds of people. So the hasid is two types. There's a hasid which is permissible and there's a hasid which is impermissible. The hasid here is the hasid that's used here is meant by ghibta, ghibta, not the hasid that's normally used. The word ghibta means tamanni mithlaha min ghayri zawaliha. It's tamanni, it's hoping for the likes of what this person has. But the, the haram type of hasid is, it is tamanni zawal al ni'mati an ghayrihi. That you hope that the blessing is taken from anybody other than you. You see somebody with something, Allah, take it away from him. Take it away from him. Uh, some people's hasid is so much, oh Allah, take it away from him. Don't even give it to me if you want. Just take it away from them. 
Are you with me? So saying, oh Allah, take it away from them, give it to me, that's hasad. What's even worse is take it away from them and don't even give it to me if you want. There's another form of hasad which is even worse. Like in the hadith here is talking about the ghibta. Ghibta means, oh Allah, don't take it away from them. Let them keep what they have. But give me something like that as well. I really want it. There's nothing you can do that to, except to that the Prophet told us. A man whom Allah has blessed with the recitation of the Quran, so that he recites it throughout the night and throughout the day. And a man whom Allah has given wealth, so that he spends of it in charity during the night and during the day. You see two people. The first one is Rajulin. Rajulun. Both ways you can say it. أَتَعُوا اللَّهُ القرآن. Allah gave him the Qur'an. فَهُوَ يَقُومُ بِي أَنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ وَأَنَاءَ النَّهَارِ Day and night salat, reading. Daytime he's reading the Qur'an, and nighttime qiyamu mufjira. وَبِتُكَنَا He's praying. At night, the man is a qiyam. He's actually standing and he's praying. Are you with me, brothers? And at the daytime, what is he doing? He's memorizing, he's going over his dars, he's learning, he's teaching the Qur'an, he's a mu'allim Qur'an. 